Welcome inside Centennial High School for section playoff volleyball between the number seven seeded Irondale Knights and the second seeded Centennial Cougars here on North Metro TV. Glad to be with you along with our entire North Metro TV crew. I'm John Hett, he's JW Cox, and JW, Cougars have been waiting. They've been waiting in the wings, by in the first round. Now they know their opponent won on Tuesday night, has made their way here and we've got our second round matchup between Irondale and Centennial. For me, these are always a little touchier matchups than even those first round matchups, say, that we'll see on Friday night that are lopsided for the football tournament. Irondale has a game under their belts. They've already won a postseason contest, but yeah, Centennial 22 wins on the season. They are champing at the bit to get out there and play again tonight. This is what you play for all season long, a chance to run through your section four tournament, and it has to start right here against Irondale. Of course, Irondale beating St. Paul Coma Park 3-0 on Tuesday night. In fact, all of the favored seeds winning. So we have one through eight. When you look at the section four, three, a bracket, North St. Paul, the number one seed, taking out St. Paul Central tonight, Mounds View, hosting Roseville, and then Stillwater welcoming in Tartan. Well, we are here in Centennial for the matchup of Cougars and Knights. When we talk about these teams, well, we've focused a lot on Centennial this year. They've been an outstanding squad. They're on a hot streak like no other, it seems like. And now they get to face a Knights team that does some things that are very different than we see from other teams. Usually when I go and ask a coach, you know, what system do you run? You hear 5-1, you hear 6-2. Those are the most two common systems. I don't know how to describe what they're doing, but we're going to talk about it as we look at the player we're highlighting because they do use a two-setter system. The number one setter and the starter in the lineup and the one who has the most sets this season is Matty Herzog. But at 143 set assists, that's far below what we see for a number one setter on a team typically. Her counterpart, Peyton Howie, on the other side has about the same number of set assists, just a few more, but she's a middle hitter and then rotates back and ends up being a setter. You don't often see a middle who will also set, certainly not on the regular, but Maddie will partner with Peyton tonight for that duo attack and really that throws the whole rotation in a, in a wacky situation that Centennial isn't going to be used to. Yeah, and if you're Centennial on the flip side of that, you have to get used to it quick. You have to know scouting report coming out. You have to rely on your seniors and rely on your upperclassmen to be able to lean on their experience and play through whatever it is that Irondale throws at you. When we were looking at a setter on one side. Here's the comparison, right? A number one setter for a 5-1 pro... Or, uh, system. She's been doing it all season long. 787, uh, excuse me, 780 set assists this season for Jaden Kleiner. It's been easy to highlight because we've got massive numbers for some of these Cougars players. We talked about the thousand plus career digs uh, for McDonald. Kleiner has 1,300 set assists in her career, even though she didn't do that role her entire um, varsity time because she wasn't getting as much playing time as a freshman and then Peterson before the postseason is done has a chance at a thousand kills she already has 958 coming in to tonight so there's some interesting individual action to watch but nothing matters more than a team win tonight because it's win or go home these teams get to the opening serve when we return shortly here on North Metro TV Share new perspectives with North Metro TV. Capture breathtaking cinematic images. Business exteriors, scenic landscapes, sporting events, or community images. With a professional videographer at the controls, North Metro TV will tailor a package for your budget. For high quality photo and video aerials, Contact North Metro TV.
Centennial High School, the site of tonight's matchup between the Cougars and Knights in this section four 3A volleyball matchup. Two teams meeting at midcourt before we get to that opening serve. They'll get their lineups checked by our officials. Let's check those lineups right now. We'll begin on the left end, the 13 and 14 Irondale Knights. They've got Dufresne, Richter, and Mulville on the outside is how it's listed. And then Harris and Herzog. I'm tempted uh, to try and explain it again, how the rotation is going to work. But it all, you know, it pretty Let's much went watch. over my head. So yeah. you follow along there. Centennial, much easier, right? Two outside hitters, two middle hitters, someone on the right side, opposite the setter. It all makes sense. And it's the lineup that we see regularly. This is the third time we've seen Centennial this season. Second time we've seen this lineup. The only time we didn't, Sidney Peterson sat out the first set of a match and then came in and everything went back to normal. Cougars in their reds tonight. Whites on the other side for the Knights. Knights coming off of a game where they found their groove. They, were, they got real confident in that St. Paul Como Park. Uh, this might not be the same situation, obviously. Centennial 22 and 4. They have won 12 consecutive matches. Looking for a Baker's dozen tonight. Yeah, a decisive first round play in win. So you're right. If the Knights were going to find some confidence at some point, it was right here, right in high. Here's the serve for Kaylee Sendell. 23 aces on the season. Her serve comes back over the net and is popped up by McDonald. Given to the middle and a big spike played over free. Clarner sets the middle spike, and that one, a kill. Ashley Crowell getting the kill. So Crowell gets the kill, and we are off here in set one. The Cougars jumping to the one nothing lead. Well, the Cougars going right to it, getting right back to the middle, perfectly in system. Couple of big strikes for Crowell. Irondale gets a better set this time. Now a dump attempt from Klarner kept alive and it's spiked into the blockers. McDonald digs it out and it's pushed over deep. Backing up on it is the libero Rodriguez, one of the captains for Irondale. Back row play by Peterson moved to the front and now pushed over free by Natalie Jones. Just set over and then the kick attempt by McDonald. It's legal, of course, but didn't work out and we're tied at one apiece. Well, and that's exactly how the Knights are going to have to play this. They did a lot there to stay alive early in that rally and it made the Cougars have a couple of missteps there. That second touch on that uh, last attempt up over the net didn't allow them to get into their system. 
Off the serve, McDonald receives. Klarner sets, and it's bumped over by Peterson. A diving dig to get to that one. Well played by Elia Harris. Klarner back set right side. Spike by Sendell, dug out by Rodriguez. Bumped up to the front, spike into the net. And that's a point for Centennial, who moves back in front. Yeah, you talk a lot about the kills for this Centennial team, but they can set up Klarner and Crow right there on the block as well. That's a part of their game defensively to help turn teams away this year. Jones serving it up, goes at Rodriguez. She gets it to the front, now set to the outside. The spike bumped up by McDonald. Klarner sets the middle, soft toucher on the block, dug out by the Knights. And they'll give it over on a little spin ball over the blockers. This one to the outside for Peterson. Her big swing popped into the air and kept alive. Great play by Natalie Jones. Now dumped over. Bumped up by Crowell. Given back to her on the outside. She touches it around the block. Almost like a finger roll in basketball. Soft and effective. Puts it right to the wood. Yeah, Natalie Jones takes a page out of that Knights book we were just talking about. Do something to stay alive and good things can happen. That's exactly what the Cougars did. A great recovery. Yeah, great finish, but you're right. Jones had the play of that point. Here a diving dig by McDonald. Klarner gives it up and it's Sendell sending it over. Here, set to the middle, Spike dug out. Nicely played by the Cougars, who give it to Peterson on the outside. Goes for a hard push, and there was net contact on the Irondale side. So Centennial extends the lead. It's a 4-1 advantage for the Cougars. Cougars look crisp, but they've had a bit of a layoff. They had the bye, but this is every bit the 22-win team we expected here, five points in. Ball given to the right side. Spike through the blocks, that's a kill. Real nice hard hit ball that time by Irondale to pull within two. Yeah, that's why you have to be sharp. The Knights, they're coming to play too. Like we talked about, that confidence, the 3-0 victory over in their first round. Rodriguez with the serve. This ball, spike too deep, and Irondale will get another point. Of course, the Knights not facing St. Paul Como Park tonight. A much tougher task ahead of them. These two teams don't match up a whole lot now that... Irondale has made the shift, remember, with Rogers coming into the Northwest Suburban. Irondale left to go to the Suburban East as that ball was spiked out of bounds by Irondale, giving us a 5-3 lead for the Centennial Cougars. Here the serve by Ashley Crow. Given to the front, and this spike dug out by Jones. Bumped up by Klarner, and this one comes off the hand awkwardly of Peterson. It's a point for Irondale, 5-4 our score. Still very much proximity, it could be a rivalry. They brought some fans here, certainly their parents' cheering section is large, taking up a section here at the gymnasium, and even some students making the trip over on a Thursday night. There are six seniors on this night squad, could be their final match. Here, Peterson spikes it off the hands and into the antenna. That's a kill for the Cougars, who slide back in front by two. Of course, on the Centennial side, Annika Boyning and Mackenzie McDonald, the only two seniors for the Cougars. And while there are a lot of seniors for Irondale, they're kind of inexperienced as seniors as they get an ace here for the Cougars. Extend that lead to 7-4, and going back for more is Klarner. Yeah, high school athletics, all seniors not created equal. You, you might have some super seniors that play all the way through, and you might have some that just kind of crack the starting lineup that first year through. Not the way I've heard super senior use prior, but I, I get where you're coming yeah. from there. Here, this dumped over by the Knights, so they get back within two. Five serving seven coming up as they check in a new player for the Knights. That's Brooklyn Oliver. Oliver, who's really good up front in terms of blocking. Ball given over on the serve. Jones plays it up, now she plays it over. This ball, back set to the right side, touched over by Tashney. Klarner, back set right side, cross court spike attempt by Sendell. This popped up and it's given over free by Peyton Howie. Klarner sets it to Peterson, spike, and that one pops out of bounds Cindy off Peterson. of Rodriguez. Now, look for more of that as, as the Cougars roll through. That set up perfectly, got the big dig from Mackenzie McDonald. What else is new right there? And a perfect set from Klarner on the opposite side to find Peterson. Peterson serving now. We saw her have 22 kills in a match earlier this season. That was only a four-setter. Ball lofted over, McDonald gets it to the front. Dump attempt, it worked earlier. This time it's played up into the air and given back. McDonald digs. Klarner sets the right side. Sendell touches it over, it finds the floor. 9-5, Cougars in front by four. 
It's their largest lead. And that point right there shows you why this Cougars team has been so successful this year. Peterson's back serving. She's on the back line. They don't have to just go to her. She'll bring, well, maybe an ace. Wow. And it does turn into a three-touch oh, ace that comes out on the near side. Irondale Knights nearly brought that away. But you've got options up front like Sindel, who finished off that point prior. They are very, very deep up front. First team to double digits, the Cougars, and they're going to add to it here. It's 11-5 now as they've scored the last four points in this matchup. Timeout taken by the Irondale Knights. They'll rally here within the huddle, trailing by six in our opening set. For the Cougars, they don't play to five sets very often. They've been dominant in their winning ways recently. They got the bye in the first round. Before that, they finished the regular season with a 3-0 win at Elk River. They went 4-0 at the Benilde St. Margaret Tournament, and they defeated Spring Lake Park and Blaine, both by 3-1 finals, which were actually a little bit surprising, especially Spring Lake Park, who has had their struggles this season. You take a look at the records for these teams this season. Yeah, the section, obviously, with some good top-flight teams, top end mm -hmm. with the Cougars and St. Paul, also with 20 wins. So you know you're going to be battle-tested coming out of this. It's just a fun time of year. Cougars not guaranteed that home court advantage throughout the tournament. But doing well to pull that number two seed here tonight. Coach Rabon Manthe just continues to turn out contenders. Not to this level every year. It's really hard to sustain a 20-plus win program every year. But they always find a way to bounce back and be competitive every single season. Last year, they made it to the third round of the section tournament. Looking to do so here this season. Blocks up front, work for the Cougars. This one, double touch, it looks like. Yeah, there's the call. And it's a 12-5 lead. So the momentum doesn't shift into the favor of the Knights after the first point out of the timeout like they were hoping. Sidney Peterson, still serving, by the way. Rodriguez up to the front. And this one hit over fairly deep in a miscommunication. Both players going after it. Kleiner and Peterson collide. No one gets the ball. And now it goes over to Irondale, who trails 12-6. Well, now a chance for the Cougars to seize that momentum back, breaking off this serve. Nice hard serve. McDonald gets it up. Peterson plays it to the front, and it's touched over by Jones. Counted for a kill by Natalie Jones. Natalie Jones, just another option there on the outside. We've seen Sendell and Jones. Boyning has been in the middle that last go-round at the serve for Peterson. McDonald plays it over. Wild got it up, but she passed it too far, and Crowell slams it to the wood. Opportunistic and definitive for Ashley Crowell right there. Leap and finish, and there's no chance for anybody to rotate over to that when it's a first touch that deep. McDonald leads this team in aces. She's got 35. That ball ate up Rodriguez a little bit, but it's played over on a strong swing. Now touched back on a long pass, and it's set up for Peterson back row. Oh. Out of bounds by a hair, and with that, Irondale pulls back within seven. That's still a dangerous look that the Cougars don't mind going to, certainly off kind of a scattered setup like that with the first touch the first time through. Skies back over the net. Good settling touch from Sindel when it came back over. And a nice back row set, just a little strong. Tashney on the serve. Klarner gets there for a bump set. Out of the back row, Peterson hits it over. This set by Howie in the spike. Good off the blocks for Irondale. A kill for the Knights. Yeah, the block was there and set up. This may be a shade late and a good angle taken off that by Dufresne. Morgan Dufresne, the captain. Do you think there's any relation to Andy Dufresne? Yes. Can you see the name Dufresne and not no. think Andy Dufresne and more no. so try to say Andy Dufresne like Morgan Freeman would? 15-8 <laughs> our score as uh, this is Kaylee Sendell. Oof. Ace for Sendell. Now you mentioned it a couple of serves ago. McDonald had one that ate up the serve receive. Mm -hmm. And that one just a shade higher there. And a different kind, but same result, skipping over the fingertips. The Cougars have six players with 20-plus aces this season. They've got th uh, four players, rather, with 30-plus aces coming into this matchup. So great regular season at the service line for a lot of different players. 
because if you've got six players, that should be all of your servers. Here, this one spiked down to the ground, and you've got a 17-8 lead before Centennial. Yeah, there's not a weak link, and it makes me think that I should amend my statement earlier. I said, this is why the Cougars are good. There's a myriad yes. number of reasons the Cougars are good. And don't put that sentence in front of your grammar teacher right there. I didn't use that right. 17-9 after the serve goes along that time. But you get the point. I mean, you look at the service line, you look at their number of potential attackers, you look at the way that can keep points alive. There's a lot of ways that this team can beat you and a lot of ways that this team can stay in game. And that's why we highlighted Klarner before the game because we've talked about Peterson, we've talked about McDonald in the past, but she's the quarterback of this team. She's distributing throughout the game and does a great job of it there, finding her teammates as Natalie Jones goes back to the service line with her team doubling up the Knights at 18-9. Checking into the game is Katie Bolcom. The senior doesn't see a ton of playing time, but she's out there for the serve. And Centennial gets a good one from their senior. Played up into the air. Now Irondale gives it to the front. This spiked over McDonald digs. Set to the outside for Peterson. Off the blocks, it's popped up. She came in for Klarner, so there's no Klarner out there, but the setting isn't a problem, and Crowell puts it into the blockers and down to the floor. A double-digit lead for the Cougars. And a big, big first set for Ashley Crowell in the middle, making the most of her opportunities and making the Knights try to stay honest there in the middle with Peterson on the one wing. So Volcom is the server as this ball played right down to the wood. Very similar to what we saw on the other side. This time, Peyton Howie, who is at the front right now, so she's playing that middle position, which moves to the back again. She is a setter. 19-10. Rodriguez on the serve for her squad. Ball played to the front. Klarner back set right side. Touched over the blocks and finding the space near the attack line is Crowell. 20 to 10, our score. Love what we saw there just a moment ago as that play was going on. Coach Rayvon Manthe, the veteran coach, she had sent her sophomore, Linnea Tubbs, into the game. Tubbs was on on that block that didn't quite work out. Coach Rayvon Manthe right there coaching her up even as the play is going on, teaching the sophomore who's now right back in. Pancake serve receive, and this one given back to the Cougars. Set towards the outside, Peterson clears the defense. Was it touched? It was a kill for the Cougars. 21-10. Yeah, just a fingernail on that back end. It came in with so much speed that it was almost impossible to dodge there with the hands up high. Got to trim those nails. 21 serving 10, this ball given to the front. Bump set, outside attack, push deep. This one moved to Sendell, who's been doing the setting, and it's touched over, counted for a kill for Tubbs. And just a sophomore getting right back in there. All right, they did not call her Tubbs. So that's Linnea not the right number. Tubbs Swenson. There we go. So she's got the double name on the backside there, 22-10. Of course, they don't wear names on their jerseys, so hey, they all it, say Cougars. At least we had the right person missing one name. Better than the wrong person altogether. I feel like I'm missing a point. 22-11 is our score. You know, I don't know that they put a point up there when the Cougars had 17, but uh, okay. I didn't think much of it until you just said that, and you're keeping track. So Here, serve for Centennial after the ball was put into the net. 23-11. I remember the 17th point. I feel like we should be at 24-11 right now. Well, nah, I'm probably wrong. Not to call him out, but Larry Mickelson is pulling double duty down there. He's doing <laughs> the PA announcing and the scoreboard operating. This ball put to the floor by the Knights. 23-12. Knights putting Peyton Howie out there for the serve. She's the one player on this team with more than 20, ki or 20 aces this season. And she's got 30 plus aces coming into this matchup. Off her swing, played into the air by Bolkon. Passed up by Hollerbach and sent over free. Back set by Howie, the spike block out of bounds, a point to the Knights, 23-13. Howie set for the serve once again. That one put up by Hollerbach, and then she'll pass it deep. 
A free ball given the other way. McDonald, Klarner sets the middle. Peterson attacks, Oof. gets it into the rafters. It's still a live ball. Centennial was celebrating, but now they come back. On the free, it's popped up into the air. Bump set out of the back row. McDonald on the attack. Her counterpart, the other libero, digs it out. And a spike kill for the wow. Irondale Knights. They did not quit on the play, and they worked it out of the rafters for a point. That's impressive right there to just have the awareness. We always say it, and I think everybody knows, but you get a ball that goes that far into the rafters, almost over the stands, you don't see a lot of those come back. Credit the Knights. That was one of those pinballs as well, because it didn't just hit one part of the rafters. It bounced all over. Here's an ace for Irondale, making a little run here late. There's not much margin for error at this point, though. They trail by eight, with Centennial only needing two to take the opening set. I think they just need one right here, John, when it comes to just settling back down. They get one more feel of a good point, they can be right back. And they don't get there. it there. 23-16. Now the score. It's a five-point run for the Irondale Knights, punctuated with an ace on the last. Just got to break this serve up, and the Cougars can settle it down. Howie serves. Nice pass to the front for Klarner. Backs that right side. Peterson, too strong. You know, in baseball, we make the joke when a guy hits it to the warning track. Maybe he should hit the gym. Peterson, it almost seems like maybe he should back off. <laughs> yeah, she's been strong. She's just hitting these wildly long at this point. McDonald, now Peterson touches it over. She went soft that time. Pops right back from McDonald, just going one at a time. This looks like my rec league. Here's the center and the spike over, dug out clean. All right, here we go. Pass, set up, spike. Klarner to the outside. Peterson touches over the block. Howie gets it into the rafters, out of bounds, 24-17. That's the big point Centennial needed. Now we're looking at set point. Yeah, but this is an Irondale Knights team that doesn't care where they are, who they're playing. They're going to go out there. And that run, that effort shows that they're not going to go quietly tonight. Peterson serves it up. Rodriguez a little rough on the receive. Now a spike. Peterson digs. Popped into the air by Boyning and hit over clean. This dumped over by Howie. Klarner sets the middle. Spike from there by Boyning. Popped into the air. Still alive. That's it. Set one goes to the Cougars. 25-17 here in this section four. 3A matchup. Season's on the line, and the Cougars have jumped out to a 1 0 lead in the match. Without the letters A, B, and O, there's no mom, no dad. There's no Brittany. Because A's, B's, and O's determine your blood type. And we're missing all of them. That's why the American Red Cross needs people like you to help fill the gaps. Schedule your donation at redcrossblood.org. Hi, I'm Peter. And there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in! Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. Thank you. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. 
They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. I don't remember how it started. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. They're really getting into the YMCA here at Centennial. 25-17 the score in the first set, so victory to the Cougars there. And I was impressed. We talked a lot about the system that Irondale runs. It could give you some trouble if you're not used to it. But I thought the Cougars throughout the balance of that set did a good job making sure it didn't really matter what Irondale yeah. was trying to do. Cougars were the aggressors. They didn't let Irondale settle in. Certainly Irondale goes on that great run, buoyed by the ball that they pulled out of the rafters and turned into a point. But for the most part, the Cougars just went about, handled their business, did what they needed to do. And and still in wait for Coach Rayvon Manthe, her top hitter in Sydney Peterson. Didn't have the best first set, didn't need start. to. Right. Yeah. So she can certainly still put a stamp on this match as we roll through. Peterson receives the first, and now an early point for Irondale. As they jump out to a one to nothing lead. But what's the one thing when you talk to a coach and say, oh, what do you know about the other team, especially in volleyball, right? We're just going to control what we control yep. on our side of the net. Because you don't body up against the other team the way you do in other sports, you have to put your focus on what you can do more than others, I believe. Well, Irondale look, with another point. And you look at both these points here in this second set. Cougar unforced errors. A little strong in the first touch right there. Same on the first point. They've just got to focus back in here. That was rough, but they get it over. Ball set to the middle, spike and kill for Howie. 3-0, that for the Knights felt a little better than the previous two points, but the jump out to a 3-0 lead with Herzog serving. Really nice start for Irondale. Another serve from Herzog. Peterson's pass goes over the net. Now set to the outside by Klarner. This spike played up and played over by the Knights. McDonald, Klarner sets the middle, spike too strong, and it's 4-0 Irondale. Well, that was the closest we've seen to the offense the Cougars had in the first set, but just missing, missing that accurate finish. How long does this go before Coach Rabine Manthe asks for a timeout pass to the right side? Well, it ends right there. No timeout needed. Sendell with the kill. Well, I think that's a coach showing a lot of trust in an experienced and talented team. I thought she was going to call a timeout late in that first as things started to slip a little bit closer. She let them work it out on the court, and that can pay dividends for players knowing they've got that trust. Set to the outside. That oh. one just out of bounds. It wasn't too long. It looked like it was yep. wide, and so it's 4-2 in favor of Centennial. I thought she might ask for the break just to bring them in and remind yeah, you're them. You're right, yeah. The Vikings game is starting now. <laughs> so if we can do this in 3-0, let's do it. Here, I'll let Ace let's do it. the Cougars. 4-3, our score. Well, and they've just got three of those back, and that's, again, another one of these hallmarks we've seen just in the games we've done. The Cougars has shown the ability to go on these protracted runs to take command. That's exactly what they did in the first, and now they've done it with four straight here in the second. 4-0 run for Irondale, matched with a 4-0 run from Centennial, and we're tied up here in the second set on a Thursday night. Some volleyball, a lot of postseason action coming your way on North Metro TV. We're back at it with football tomorrow. It's Centennial again. As this ball played up into the air, back set right side, spike blocked back by the Cougars, and they've got their first lead of the second set. Cougars tomorrow night, JW, facing who? Stillwater. The, the ponies. ponies. So it's in fact, the whole area of Stillwater. Yeah, the whole Stillwater area will be out right outside here at the stadium. Another ace. Oh and hopefully it won't be a repeat of two years ago when we were here in the blowing snow. Somehow you missed that one. Oh. I don't remember what happened, but uh, Rick Palermo was around in his Gore-Tex jacket. 
I've done my share of snowy cold games. Oh, I'm just, exactly. After the pocket aces from Sentinel, this time this one goes into the net. There for the infamous lights out game. Yes. That'll be fun though. Tomorrow night, looking forward to what the Cougars can do. In fact, I've done centennial snowy games before yeah. as well. Ball set to the right side. Kill for the Cougars. 7-5. Big Cougar week too. Uh, both girls and boys soccer. G boys fall in the quarterfinals. Girls yeah. play on. They'll play eggs and soccer Monday morning at 10 a.m. Ball played to the front. Klarner sets it up for Peterson. There's the Sydney Peterson the Cougars are looking for. And the whole bench got up after that one to celebrate with her. 8-5 on our score. Yeah, they just probably do that every time, but I noticed it this time. <laughs> it was there was a little more a little more pop to it when they jumped off the chairs. Knights set it to the middle. Spike kill for Howie. 8-6 our score. Just a little mistiming there. Sindel and or Sindel and Kroll, Kroll were certainly right there. But just a shade late on the hop, so it allowed that one to drop in front of their block. Jay-Z Golagowski into the game for the Knights. She'll serve it up. The junior with 11 aces on the season. Popped up by Sendel. Now a spike by Peterson with power. I don't think she's missed in this one, John. She was deep. We talked about it. This time the power getting on top of it as well and forcing it well down inside the line. So she was basically that sleeping giant in the first with just a couple of kills while her teammates did the heavy lifting. Off the serve receive, Howie bumps set to the outside. Rough pass there, and it goes as a point for the Cougars. They're the first team to double digits here in the second set. 10-6, the lead for Centennial. I love how Peterson just, the interaction with her teammates on the court as the game's rolling on. You can tell she's a leader. So an ace that time for Crowell. She's creeping towards 30 now. That's 28 on the season. Five-point lead for the Cougars. And Crowell sets it up again. That one into the net. 11-7 the score. But what a weapon to have. And, and that's always a part of some of those runs the Cougars have made, right? If you can mix in an ace, all of a sudden that becomes like a free point. And then you win a couple in the system. And you've strung together three or four points all of a sudden. Here's the freshman, Howie. That one popped up by Sandal, now given over free, and it's out of bounds. A wide push that time makes it 11 to 8. Just got a little caught in between there, what they wanted to do on those first couple touches. But credit the Cougars with what they've done. 11 4, basically, their run right here after it was 4 0 for Irondale. Tough pass. Klarner plays it well. In fact, she plays oh. it to the floor. They're going to say double touch on the dump attempt. Never mind. 11-9, Irondale's within two. Howie, she was there at the end of the first set, helping Irondale keep the set on life support. Here, she is pushing the issue. And it's 11-10. Centennial has led ever since they jumped out to a 5-4 advantage. Tied at 11 with the ace. The old husband and wife play. Thought you were going to get it. I thought you were going to get it. Nobody gets it. The kids are left at school, not being picked up. 11-11, our score. A timeout taken by the Cougars. They started in a 4-0 hole. They took the lead. They expanded that lead to as many as five points. And now that is gone as well. We're tied at 11 here in the second set. We talked about the volleyball tonight, the football uh, tomorrow night. We've got soccer next week early Monday, right? Monday morning? Monday morning, first 10 a.m. Yep. So start your week off right with that. Of course, that'll be tape delayed. Right. But So really, there'll be a Sports Den episode on at 10 a.m. And just know as you're watching that, there will be soccer being played at U.S. Bank. Or go out and support your team and be there in sure. person to watch the Cougars. Uh, you can take a break from work if you're downtown. That's easy enough. Uh, but you can see the highlights that very night at 10 p.m. Yeah, I'm sure they'll turn it around that fast. Oh, for sure. Well, I'm being told we have cross-country highlights. 
I run, like run, it. step, run, well, yeah, step. I mean, it's run, the playoffs run. for them as well. Absolutely. Howie with the serve. I love it when we go out and get those shots. It's it's pretty tough to do on an individual matchup yeah. kind of thing, but when we get to sections, absolutely, let's highlight those play or I mean, those athletes. Let's be honest, it doesn't lend itself to coverage like most sports do, okay? But that doesn't mean it should not be covered sure. because absolutely, those kids are going out there and those athletes, as you say, putting it all on the line and having tremendous success. And really, you know, we've seen it done on TV as it was a quick point for the Cougars answered by Irondale. We're tied again. We've seen, you know, there are TV productions that can do it. It takes a lot of cable to be on and the trail crew yeah. and cameras and Let's face it, none of us. We're not, we're not there yet. We're not rolling in Jeeps with a camera out the back to follow people along at this point. But we do have great equipment for what we can shoot, and that's why we're here tonight for volleyball after the point for the Cougars. Sydney Peterson rolling in the alley right there. Not a Jeep, but puts it right down the line for another kill. Off the receive. Howie sets the outside. The spike blocked back. Good solo block by Sendel. Peterson, a diving one-hander. McDonald pops it up. Touched over by Jones, given back free, hard spike, bumped to the front by Galagoski. Back on the Cougars' side, they'll play it to the middle, and McDonald into the net. We're tied at 13. That doesn't happen much. McDonald, known for the digs, she also can help keep points alive with plays just like that. Klarner goes back down to a knee to keep it alive and just into the net. They're in a fight here in the second. These can always be. A big hurdle to get over in these playoff matchups when you're the team that is favored, should win here at home. But you're in a fight right now in the second. This ball touched over clean. At least it got past the defense after hitting the top tape. 14-13 our score. Now, you weren't there for the matchup against Spring Lake Park, and I can't remember clearly the matchup against Blaine. Was it the second set that was dropped, or did Blaine take the opening set? Blaine took the opening they set, did. I okay. believe, and then Centennial, yeah. Centennial came back. It was about midway through that second set. They put a stamp on it and didn't really look back and won it in four. Those are the last times that yep. Centennial had lost a set because they'd won five consecutive matches without dropping a set bef uh, after those two. They've won 12 consecutive overall uh, matches coming into tonight as this ball spiked into the net by Irondale and 16-13. Cougars in front by three. I knew in the Spring Lake Park when they dropped the second, so I was wondering if we were starting to see a trend on our broadcast no. of them dropping the second or struggling in the second, because again, at this point in the last set, they were up big. Here, ball put in the donut hole. Everyone standing around turns to watch it fall into the campfire. 16 and 14, our score. Well, you've just got a Knights team that believes right now. They've got no reason not to. They had a late charge in the first, even though they dropped it 25-17. They had a big lead in this one. They've come back and tied it twice. Ball popped into the air and given over with a nice low line drive. Feet planted strike. It counts for a kill, 16-15. Knights back within one. Coach Ray Bimanthi in that last time I was talking about taking care of the ball. That hasn't really even entered into play these last couple of points. Irondale has just put their system to work and come up with big-time kills. Oh, oh, there's a message. Big spike right into the face of the Knights. And with that, it's a 17-15 Cougars lead. Crowell does the message with the swing and then a little smile after it. She had a big first set. Good to see her get that one from the middle. Off the Sendel serve, it's spiked back strong, tips off the blockers, McDonald, Klarner touched over, and that one finds the floor, kept inbounds, and it's a kill for the Cougars, Ashley Crowell. As old as a fastball and a changeup in baseball, right? You big bring one with the big swing through, the block is gonna be there early, anticipating that, and you drop the changeup in. A let on the serve. And now a near joust at the net. I was hoping we'd get some of those with the Knights, but this one played down to the floor. And it's a point for Irondale, 18-16 our score. Now this is a much more manageable situation than the Knights had. Remember it was 23-11 when they tried to make their run and come back. Given to the outside, they do it again, but this time it plays over. And the kill with the dump put right in front of Herzog. Is it Herzog that's worn it both times? I believe that it might be with two strong strikes going into her face. 
19-16. Not for the faint of wow. heart, right up there along the net, John. Here, rough set, but it's played over, and a diving dig is required to McDonald. Now, Kleiner sets Peterson, and a kill for Peterson. And Herzog might be feeling punch drunk at this point. She takes another one to the noggin. But what a wonderful set right there for the Cougars. What'd you have? You had the big dig for McDonald, the perfect set for Klarner, and it goes right to Peterson, and it gets him to 20 points. It's exactly how they would draw it up with those three being right around it and getting it done. And now with the Irondale timeout, Cougars talking over a four-point lead. This set has been back and forth between the two teams, of course. The Cougars took the opening set 25-17. Right now, it looks like we'll be tighter down the stretch for this second set, unless there's a big run coming for the Cougars. And the thing is, you can absolutely see that happening. You could absolutely see them getting almost all the way there, and the Knights making a run, or vice versa. The Knights make the run. Cougars come back. We go trading back and forth. This set has been all over the board in terms of scoring runs. Yeah, this is, these are two teams that are late in the year. They're comfortable in what they're doing. And really, it's coming down to which team makes those mistakes and which team can capitalize here late in this second set to either put us 2-0 or tied at one apiece. Twenty serving 16. Here's Natalie Jones. She's been good at the service line tonight, and it continues. That's a strong one that's played back to the middle and finally given over free. Raptors again. <laughs> Peterson from the front powers it to the floor. 21-16. You know she was. You could see some frustration in the first set, but she internalized it and used it to build what she's put together here in the second set. Rodriguez receives, set to the middle. All kinds of room for Peyton Howie, who touches it down, 21-17. That's a great read by Howie to know that that space was gonna be there again. The block may be coming a step early or committing a step early, and just no support on the back end. Jump serve from Galagoski. Ace for Galagoski, 21-18 the score. Another serve, McDonald receives that one clean. Back set right side, touched over by Crow. This one given to the right side. The spike popped into the air out of the back row by Jones. Given to Peterson, Peterson gets the kill. Oh, how we had a chance at that and just couldn't quite corral it cleanly. Yeah, it was just enough of a little let up for Peterson right there. It doesn't always have to be those high rainbow change ups to drop into space. That one just got the timing of the blocker off. You said she was there, just couldn't complete it. Ball to the right side, the spike, a near kill. There it is, count it for the Knights. 22-19, now our score. So changes with Brooklyn Oliver coming into the front row. And Howie back to the service line. The Knights have been at their best when she is serving tonight. The receive given to Klarner, the spike finds a way through the blockers and Annika Boynik makes it 23-19. 23-19. Monsters Inc? Hmm. No? I, I, my, my Monsters Inc knowledge, not at the same level. I believe that's the emergency code for when a child touches a monster. 23-19. They have to shave it. Ball given to the outside and Sidney Peterson. <laughs> That's a code Sidney Peterson right there. The code one three when she swings and almost puts it through the floor. That's punishing the ball. Set point here in the second. Cougars looking to go up 2-0 in the match. 24-19. So far so good for the Cougars. And this one makes it official. 25-19. Centennial now in front. 2-0. They can sweep when we come back for the third next on North Metro TV.
awkward. On the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Hi, I'm Peter. And there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in! Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. Nearly one in three third graders in Minnesota are struggling readers. 40% of middle schoolers are falling behind in math starting as early as fourth grade. Reading Corps and Math Corps tutors are changing those numbers, but we need your help. We provide you all the training. You help children in your community succeed. These AmeriCorps positions are paid every two weeks and include benefits such as health insurance and college tuition reimbursement. Go to our website to find out how you or someone you know can change the life of a child. All right, this song they like yeah, more. Yeah, more into this one. I was thinking the same thing. All right. So good for good. good for Sweet Caroline. Larry Mickelson's found his groove over there. All DJ right. Larry. <laughs> He's been in his groove all night. We're ready to start the third set with Centennial leading 2 nothing. So how much does Centennial want to end this right now? Again, they've shown that they are the better team here. They've shown why they won 22 games. They've shown that they can finish off this match. I want to see how quickly and strong they come out focused in this third set. It was a 4-0 run for Irondale to start the second. What did the Cougars do here in the third? You got to think they've been getting stronger, right? Right. As the season has gone on, you don't just rattle off 12 wins to end the year. You aren't getting better and better. Ball set to the outside, a spike down the line. It's a kill for the Knights, and they start with a 1-0 lead. They took the opening point in the last set as well. In fact, they scored the first four before yielding four straight points, and then never taking the lead again, although we had ties at what, 11, 12, 13? And then that was it. It was all Cougars the rest of the way. Irondale gives to the outside. Touch around the blocks. Nice back up there by Sendel. And a back row that spike for Peterson that's too strong. 2-0 Irondale. I mean, for all our talk about how close it was, and it certainly was, and Irondale deserved credit for that, it was a two-point difference yep. in the finals. 25-17, 25-19. So really, it's, it's kind of splitting hairs here about eventually what the Cougars were able to do. But you'd love to see them come out or they would love to come out and just dominate here in the third. McDonald with a diving dig. This popped up in the air and given over free out of the back row. Here's the set by Herzog. Spike at the net by Howie. Herzog setting to the outside. Now a spike. That one popped off the blockers and fell on their back. 3-0 Irondale. Went after Jones and Crowell on that far side after the Cougars had had a successful block just before that. Herzog serve played by McDonald. Set to the outside. Trying to push it down the line was Crowell. This ball came towards the net, and it's a point for the oh, Cougars. Clarner never had to touch it, but she was there. Had it popped over the tape. Never did. I thought she was a little close to the tape there. Could have been. Here, one serving three as the Cougars find themselves on the wrong end of the scoreboard. Ball pass to the right side. That touched over, and accounts for a kill. 4-1. Irondale in front. Knights still smiling. They're down 2-0 in this match, but they are looking to force a fourth here. Served by Dufresne. Ball given to the front. 
And this put to the floor, 4-2 with the crowd kill. Crowell has been the player of note really most consistently. Obviously, Peterson does what she does, but Crowell helped carry things from an attacking standpoint in that first set, had some big moments in the second, and here a chance to go on a run. I feel like Sendel and Crowell have been those top players tonight in some sense, and they are the second and third players in terms of kills. A point given to Irondale as the Cougars go down in a heap. Klarner and Peterson, two of their top players, both get up and seem to be okay as it's a 5-2 Irondale lead. Yeah, they hit the line under the net there, trailing a little too deep on that dive. But you're right, Sendel with a great first set. Again, as the Cougars found their way through the second, not as much. Peterson with power, and that's good for a kill. 5-3 on the score. I wonder if Peterson will ever get into the ring. I feel like she's, she would have a mean hook. Ball popped into the air. Play to the middle, and the Libro Rodriguez sends it over free. Clarner sets the middle and open space in the back row corner. Nice job by Boining to find it. 5-4, our score. Irondale still in front by one. Yeah, Boining the senior, 50-plus kills on the year, and that was just a heady play. She knew that the libero had come over, left a little gap on that right side. Accurate on that kill. Set to the out, or rather the right side, and it's a good kill for the Knights. They will not relinquish the lead, 6-4 in favor of Irondale. Here's Peyton Howie to serve it up. Getting into a rhythm, slamming it on the floor, she always does. Now the jump serve, played up by Sendel, popped into the air. McDonald out of the back row, gives it over free. Laying out for it, they keep it alive, and Irondale sends it over, it's a kill. The Knights with Taryn Tashney getting the kill. Tashney just under 100 kills coming into the night. Could cross that mark. I haven't been keeping close tabs on her number tonight. I haven't called her name too much, a handful of times. And I think some of that's indicative of the struggle to maybe get into the system all the time late in these first two sets. Ball popped into the air by Tashney and then pushed over deep and unable to chase it down is Natalie Jones. Now 8-4. Three straight points for the Knights. That one into the antenna. 8-5, three-point for Centennial. Now they send Peterson back to serve. Now, now can they use it? Irondale leaving the door open here. Oliver receives, now given to the right side. Good job by the blockers. I thought they were going to be late, but they get it back to the Knights end. Jones a good recovery over there on that back side of that block. Air spike too long and it's 9-5 Irondale with a four point edge. So Rodriguez goes back to serve the Libro. Just shy of 400 digs coming into the night. She's actually right on the heels of McDonald, which super impressive numbers there. This impressive from the middle, a good spike. Hits the rafters, great play by Oliver to come up with that one after the odd bounce. Now Klarner sets the middle, spike. Kept alive, nope, that one's out, and down for the point. Centennial gets it, 9-6 our score. I, I don't think I've seen maybe three times someone successfully play it out of the rafters in the whole of the time we've come here, <laughs> much less in one match. That was a hot shot, too. I mean, it came redirected straight back down to the floor nearly, and Oliver, right place, right time, but also right reaction right. to get a good play on it. Cougars. Give to the outside, the spike off the block, popped up by Rodriguez. Back set to the right side. Now Peterson towards the front, trying to keep it alive with Klarner. Into the net is the call. And the first team to double digits here in our third set is the Irondale Knights. They lead 10-6. I thought she got that clean, and it was going to be a nifty move to, instead of just allow it to bump over, to be able to get something under control. But Klarner just drifted a little bit. After the subs, we got to figure out who's serving. Ah, it's Harris. Harris, defensive specialist, over 100 digs this season. And she gives the serve over on a high float. Klarner sets the middle, spike, popped into the air. Knights have been better on defense than I expected, to be honest. Absolutely. And this ball 
nearly kept alive, but it does find the floor. 11 to 6 the score. And because of that defense, they're hanging around. Yeah. I mean, they're down 2-0 in the match, but they are highly competitive here in the third. Nothing is ever done, whether it's rafters, whether it's off a pancake. The Knights continue to find ways to stay alive in these rallies. A right side spike, right side kill. She kept it down the line, and Kaylee Sendell makes it 11-7. And they need 7-11 coming up. And they need that. They need that from Sindel. They need her to be accurate. They need Ashley Crowell in the middle, who's right back there now. And Peterson's working from the back line. So there's options out there for the Cougars. Sendel serve into the net. Three point for Irondale. They lead 12-7. So Maddie Herzog, the sophomore, checks in. There's two freshmen that seem run on this night's nice team. Howie, who we've talked a ton about, and then Oliver, who just came up with that really nice play. Back set, and there. I should say back row set for Peterson. They put out the call for the code 1-3, and Peterson comes right through. And now she's back up at the front row. They needed that. They need something to sharpen them up here. 12-8. Jones serve. A little rough handle in the back row for Harris, but they get it over to the Knights. Klarner sets the middle, push to the outside, and a good play. Pushed it to her right and found just inside the lines. Crown with a kill. That's a middle hitter, hitter in Crowell who knew who was to the left and knew that those the defense in white was going to shift towards Sidney Peterson. There was going to be open floor, and it would take quite a dive to get that little dump in. Cougars trying to play smarter here. You don't need to be smart when you just hit it like that. Four, two, and yet still. 12 10. And she's got all of that. Yep. You know, her game is complete, there's no doubt. But when you can just rear back and slam it like that, not a lot of defenses can come up with a plan to stop you. 13 10 after a free point for the Knights. And the smarts, too, go back to the point before because that's embedded in the Knights. Yes. Thinking, all right, well, we can't overcommit to Peterson because we know there's options on the back end. And that's why Klarner is so valuable as the setter right there in the middle, how she can direct this. Bump set, and Peterson puts it over, finds the hardwood. Peterson. Back within two oh, are the Cougars. The Centennial has never wow. led in this third set. Still a ways to go before they tie. Crowell serving it up. Harris to the front, set up by Herzog. No, she played it over. This one popped into the air, double touch. Sendel couldn't play it clean. It's 14 to 11 in favor of Irondale. I like pointing up there up front. She provides kind of a formidable presence on the block, and I think that came into play in that tip over for Irondale we were talking about. Mm -hmm. She was there changing the thinking. Jacqueline Wild off the serve. Peterson, 14-12 <laughs> our score as Peterson has been dialed in since the start of the second set. That's not easy right there, John, to put that where she did from where she swung it, going to that back corner and being that accurate. Well, the joke we made in the first set was maybe, you know, she should calm down and use a little less power, but the, the real thing of it is she needed to get higher up on yep. the ball so she could be on top and slam it down sooner. Just like that. How about Peyton Howie? Yeah. Uh, Howie with the kill, and it's 15-12 in favor of Irondale. Twelve serving 15. Here's Howie. Given to the front, Klarner, back set right side, Peterson, nice Ooh. adjustment because that pass was rough, and now the Knights having their own rough time of it, give it over free. McDonald, Klarner, set up right side, the spike comes all the way back over McDonald, Klarner, Peterson, out this time. 16-12, the lead for the Knights is four. It matches their largest lead. Nope, they had a five-point lead at one point, excuse me. Off the receive, Klarner sets the outside. Spike and kill that time, courtesy of Sendel. They've had some good moments. They've had some great rotations like that. You go back a couple of points to when Peterson had the big kill coming across the court. But what have we not had in this yet? 
that big run for the Cougars extended to four or five points. They need that here to take a lead. Peterson serve out of bounds. A lot of service errors here in the third set. We're really praising the Cougars' work at the service line. It has not continued into the third set. 17-13, our score. Good read by the Cougars. They leave it alone as it's launched over the back line. 17-14, Centennial back within three. And here's the big senior walking back to the service line. McDonald to try and roll through 30 plus aces. The receive to the front. McDonald pops it up. Set to the right side over the blockers. And now a free ball sent over the defense off their feet a little. And this one down to the floor by Crowell. 17-15. I mean, the Libero was sitting on the floor. I thought they might go a little quicker, but... They made short work of it once it got to Crowell. Well, and if the Cougars can do it, if it sets up, they've had the most success, I think, consistently in this match, going in the middle. Ace! Uh, Mackenzie McDonald, One, two, the team leader in aces, adds to her collection. One point separating the two teams here in the third set. McDonald, popped up by Rodriguez. Off the outside touch, just enough to find the floor. 18, 16. Checking in, Leah Harris back to the back row for some serving. Gets her side set up ready, and now the serve floated. McDonald, pass to the front. Touched into the blockers, but kept alive by the Knights. They can't strike it over, though. Cougars back within one. Close as they've gotten. Trying to find the tie. Like a man on Father's Day. Here. Ball set to the right side, and it's put to the floor. Disappointment again. 19-17 as the Cougars have not been able to get over that hump and they are running out of time in the third set. Yeah, at some point you start trading points like this and all of a sudden you're into the 20s and it gets hairy. McDonald receives. Klarner, bump set. Hit over by Crowell on the other side. Set to the middle and a spike and kill. Herzog for Howie. And Peyton Howie puts her team up 20-17. Centennial takes first Cougars asking for a break, trailing by three with limited time left here in the third set. And the Knights have been resilient. Again, they have never let go of the lead. They have never allowed Centennial to get closer than one. They fought off multiple attacks. They've parried, if you will, everything that the Cougars have sent their way. Well, and improving with each set, no matter what happens the rest of the way. 17 in the first as they cut it down close, showed they were going to be here to fight. Took that early lead in the second, end up with 25-19 as the final. And here they've been the first to 10, the first to 20 now. And that's a Knights team that nothing to lose right there. Yeah, I mean, they look so loose yeah. in the huddle right now. And, you know, everything's aces for them. Yeah, they're down 2-0 in the match, but they're leading this set in a match that they were not favored to probably even take one if you look at the records on paper for these two teams. Just the 13th win of the season in their opening round win for the Knights, where Centennial has 22 victories this season. Ball floated over, McDonald receives. Klarner, and hit into the net, it's 21-17. First point out of the break goes to the Knights. Not what Coach Jackie Rabine Manthe was hoping for when she called for the break. And a point away from matching their largest lead of the set. Crowell serves. Peterson receives. Klarner sets Peterson back row. That's the kill for Sidney Peterson. That's the kind of play the Cougars need. 18 serving 21. Here's Natalie Jones. Bump to the front. Quick set, and it's blocked back. Another try for the Knights. Hit deep. Played to the front by Jones. Popped into the air, touched around the blocks. Uh -huh. Good spacing. It's found 
off the push by Peterson. And she just hunted that ball. She let Klarner have a little bit of space to get that touch and then knifed her way in there right along the net. We talked about her having the smarts and the vision to make just that sort of play earlier. She does there. Ball bumped up. Klarner sets Peterson. Peterson finds the floor. She kept it in the back line, and we're at a one-point set once again. Cougars looking for that elusive tie. Natalie Jones, too strong. 22-20, Irondale. It, was it Sisyphus that was pushing the boulder <laughs> up the hill in Greek mythology, and then it would just roll right back down? Getting close, never quite to the mountaintop for the Cougars. Dufresne on the serve. Klarner has to go a long ways for the second touch, and then it's given over free in the end. Set to the middle, that's a kill. Touch it around the box, and Peyton Howie makes it 23-20. And the Cougars take another timeout. Centennial knows they need a run to keep their hopes of a sweep alive. On the other side, the Knights looking to close it out and force a fourth. By far our closest set of the night. It was 25-17 Cougars in the first, 25-19 Cougars in the second. But this will be decided by less than five points. When you look at it, the Cougars, or rather the Knights, you, you said it and I think you're right. Not, not a lot of people maybe giving them a chance to come in here and take a set. But not only that, even less of a chance to potentially take that set by leading wire to wire, yes. which is exactly what they've done here. Handful of one point differences, but they have always found a way to answer and keep the Cougars from going on a run. Well, they've got to do it to the tune of two more points here. Now serving, Dufresne. That one nearly out of bounds. Klarner gives it to Peterson. She'll push deep into the back corner and she finds the space. 23-21. Ashley Crowell set to serve. The junior on the jump serve, floats it over. Popped into the air by Tashney. Moved to the front. Spike kill. <laughs> Set point for the Irondale Knights here in the third. Checking in is Jacqueline Wild. Off the receive, it's given to Peterson. Her shot blocked back, but McDonald keeps it alive. And Peterson gets the kill in the end. Wow, McDonald. Cougars Mc need two more to keep this alive. Mackenzie McDonald, what a play off that block. The Knights had it as good as one, and McDonald turns it around. Kleiner on the serve. Rodriguez receives, back set right side. The spike, McDonald picks it up. Klarner gives it to Peterson. They just keep feeding her. She pushes to the back. Now it's moved to the front, other side. Deep push, and they give him a taste of their own medicine. The Knights push it to the corner and push us to a fourth set, 25-22 in favor of the Irondale Knights. We'll play at least four tonight. Cougars still up 2-1, but the momentum with the Knights as we step aside on North Metro TV. Share new perspectives with North Metro TV. Capture breathtaking cinematic images. Business exteriors, scenic landscapes, sporting events, or community images. With a professional videographer at the controls, North Metro TV will tailor a package for your budget. For high quality photo and video aerials, contact North Metro TV.
North Metro TV News is your source for local stories. Highlighting the issues in your community, we bring you the news that's closer to home. Join us as we explore the stories all around us, every day at 2.30, 6.30, and 10.30. Fourth set action coming your way on North Metro TV. Centennial took the first two, fairly decisive wins for them. In a tighter matchup, Irondale controlled wire to wire and got the win. That was just impressive the way that they held on to that lead, built it up to five midway through and never relinquished that. And look at them, they're just flying around. It, I mean, everybody thought they'd be headed for the bus by now or before. You look at the way the first set ended, they extended that one. And now they extend this match by winning it. And there's no reason to think that they can't go out and win another. The momentum is with the Knights. The Cougars looking to change that. And volleyball is a strange sport where that can change on a dime, it feels like. Doesn't change the start, though. This is the third set that the Irondale Knights have gotten the first point. They laid one nothing. They're undaunted. And just the body language is far different. And that's what's so dangerous for the Cougars. Yep. They've allowed that to happen by not playing at the top of their game in the third set. And, you know, we talked about how they were over, able to overcome Peterson's struggles swinging in the first set. The problem in the third was that there were multiple people who were not producing, especially at the service line. Here's a second point for Irondale. 2-0 their lead. That's one of those areas we talked about where the Cougars can really set themselves apart. It's on that service line. And if they don't have that, all of a sudden, it opens the door. 3-0. Now, not only is this the third consecutive set that Irondale has taken the first point, it's the third consecutive set that they've taken the first three points. Cougars digging themselves a hole over and over again. Peterson receives out of the back row. Peterson looking to kill. She's got that crazy look in her eyes. Ball bumped to the middle, and it's pushed over deep. Rodriguez, who came up with the big dig off the Peterson swing earlier, got it again, and this one falls to the floor. Centennial gets on the board. It's 3-1. to one. And just like every other time, you mentioned now in three straight sets when the Knights have sprinted out to that early lead, so big for the Cougars to get that first point on the board and now try and turn it into some momentum. Ace help. for the Cougars. 3-2, our score. Sandal with 25 aces on the season. Sets herself up again. Looking to tie. Instead, she goes into the net. 4-2, Knights in front. And some of those, that goes back to what Coach Raymond Manthe was telling him in a second set timeout, valuing the ball. That even comes back to the service error. Sometimes you might be trying to be too fine in those instances. Ball pushed deep, and the Cougars are going to that more and more. It's not just Peterson, as this one by Tashney popped up by Peterson. Klarner sets McDonald. She'll send it over free. Popped up to the middle, and the spike dug out on the attempt by Peyton Howie. This one. Pushed to the front, and out of the back row, saved for a moment by Peterson, but behind her, it wasn't played cleanly on a rough try. 5-2. I mean, that's a hard ball to get to, certainly, for both players. Five serving two as the Knights have taken control in some ways, it feels like. Yeah, it's certainly, I mean, the way they dominated that third set, and they haven't let up here, it feels like the Knights of the 22 win team. Ashley Crowell gets the kill. It's 5-3 as they get the serve out of Dufresne's hands. And we even pointed it out. As much as we talked about and lauded the Knights for the way they fought in those first two, those were still decisive finals for the Cougars. Mm -hmm. 
And they just haven't had that same edge since that third came about. Ball set to the outside. The spike dug out in the back row. Well done by Jones, and it's given over free. Rodriguez, Herzog sets the middle, and no one could get it. 5-4. Cougars within one. And they have to make those instances count. They have to make the Knights pay for their single unforced error mistakes more so than the Knights make them pay. Here, a spike into the blocks. That's the kill, and the Irondale Knights keep their lead. It's 6-4. Knights making some changes. They'll bring in their wild card. Jacqueline's wild. Is she good for an ace? Not this time around. 6-5, Centennial within one. Other than zeros, it's a long, been a long time since these teams have been tied on the scoreboard. Rodriguez set up by Howie, touched from the right side, popped into the air by Peterson. Dump attempt, pancake kept it alive. Great effort by Rodriguez. There wasn't a lot on that ball, so it didn't bounce very high off of the pancake as we are tied at six apiece. I think we like talking about pancakes too much. I was just thinking, you know, it wouldn't bounce very high if it was a nice, fluffy, warm pancake. Well, I consider myself to be a short stack, so 7-6 hour score as the Centennial Cougars have their first lead since the end of the second set. And maybe that's the magic elixir here. They finally got to the top. They finally pushed to a lead. Let's see what the Cougars can do with it. It's their maple syrup, if you will. This ball played out of bounds by the Cougars, and we are tied. Oh, excuse me, that went to the yeah. Cougars. 8-6 their score. I actually like the, the cheap stuff more than I like the fancy yeah, I don't maple mind. stuff. Yeah, give me a Aldi brand. Aldi brand? Yeah. Aunt Buck Jemima. 88. I mean, there's so many options out there. This ball popped into the air. Klarner sets the front, played over the blocks, and it's given back to the Cougar side. Peterson. Gives, gets, pushes deep. Rodriguez flailing, and it's a point for Centennial. Can we go get pancakes after this? Why not? It's about the easiest food to make in the whole world, so anyone makes pancakes That's late at true. night. That's true. Ball given to the right side. And the Cougars block it back. Centennial, the first team to double digits. They lead 10-6. On the serve by Crowell. This ball given to the middle. The spike pushed to the front. Set for Peterson. She hit the tape, and then it's popped up by the defense. Rough passing, but it's punched over by... The Knights given back free to Irondale's side. Here, set by Herzog to the middle, touched around the block. Cougars get there, joust at the net, one by the Knights, of course. They pull within three, it's 10-7. That's a good lift for Howie and the Knights. And I'm glad you got that in there. Oh, I've been waiting all night. Now she'll get the ball from her squire and we're ready to serve. Peyton Howie. Set to the outside, and it's, it's just no doubt. She gets it, and she is killing it. It's a saying, but also it's literally the stat that she just accumulated, a kill. 11-7 right. our score, Cougars up by four. Here, ball given to the outside, the spike. Picked up by Jones and kept alive. McDonald gives it over. Here, Howie sets it up. Given over free by Tashney. Peterson out of bounds. 11-8. Cougars lead trim to three. So they trailed 3 nothing, And then they made it out to an 11-7 lead. So down by as many three, up by as many as four for the Cougars. As this ball sent over by Rodriguez. Spike from the outside. Again, a lot of these Cougars just trying to go around the blocks in some nifty ways. McDonald, Klarner, Peterson, spike and kill. Sydney Peterson powers through. Boy. A 
sometimes she loves to have that block come in there because that also is a way she can show that that power is there, able to push it through, drops harmlessly to the deck. I don't know if we've said power so many times. Almost as many Almost times as, as many. we've yep. said it's pancakes. pancakes. There we go. Peterson out of the back row. Now give it to the right side. Spike too strong. Knights back with a three. Nine serving, 12 coming up as the Knights send Sophie Richter behind the service line. Richter, a sophomore, her serve. Picked up by Jones, up to the front. Klarner sets up Jones, touched it into the block, kept alive, and given over free, but out of bounds. Boy, Point to the two. Cougars. Yeah, so too strong on that free ball over. Yeah, uh, in the back row, just checking in is Maya Ternowski, one of the players up from the JV squad. Ball given to the right side and punched over by Brooklyn Oliver. Cougars give it over free. Up to the front, ball is blocked back and everyone caught up front by the attack line. The serve stays with McDonald, the Cougars loving it. 14-9. Sindel and Crowell, that's, that's the A number one block tandem right there. Obviously you get Jones over there from time to time and Klarner, they can hold their own with whoever is in the middle. But you get those two set up and you like your chances to finish off a block. Smiles on the Cougar sideline this time around. They've got a five point lead. We're about midway through the first, or rather the fourth set. Cougars took the first two. They dropped the last one and things a little less jovial on the sideline of the Knights. We're playing Foot loose and fancy free in the third set when they got in front. They stayed disciplined all the way to keep themselves in front. And when it started out strong, you might think they could do it again, but the Cougars have taken control. Can they hold on? But just the difference in body language between the two sidelines based on who's in the lead. There was dancing in the Centennial Huddle that time. Yeah, it's just, it's. It's a lot easier to be up two sets to one and up five rather than constantly trying to climb that hill that they were in the third. And they are starting to get that confidence back and the swagger of a 22-win team back. McDonald serve a deep one, popped into the air. Rodriguez gives it to the front, pushed around the block. Peterson out of the back row. Klarner gets it up, but it's on the wrong side. Knights move it to the middle, punch it over soft. McDonald digs. Klarner sets the front, spike and kills Cougars, courtesy of Ashley Crowell. Crowell in the middle. Prowling around that net. And she has been good finishing from right there on the logo. Here's Mackenzie McDonald. The serving run continues. This one rolls up on Rodriguez, but kept alive and given over free, courtesy of Howie. Now a spike from the front, touched off the blockers. Howie out of the back, set to the outside and pushed over. McDonald again, first to receive. Spike, dig out. Oliver pops this one up and it's pushed over deep. Peterson prowls the back row, gets it up, move to the front. Natalie Jones spiking cross court. Rodriguez a diving dig, comes over to the net and it's set to the outside. Into the net this time by Centennial. A long rally ends in an Irondale point. And Natalie Jones just got off the ground a little bit late for that one. Flying in towards the net. Yeah, a heck of a rally too. Two teams leaving it all out there in the fourth. Knights, Matty Herzog serving. Peterson receives, give to the front. Klarner back set from the middle, pushed into the block. It's a kill for Crowell. I feel like I've said kill for Crowell a hundred times tonight. Yeah, she's been a big part of it, and a junior that will look to be a big part of things moving forward as well. They're going to come back loaded with Peterson, who already at the tip top of her game, chance to get better. Crowell as well. I mean, they're definitely going to miss McDonald, but it's just her and Boyning. And Boyning sees significant minutes off the bench. But a good portion of the mainstays are back as a point for the Cougars, thanks to Natalie Jones pushing it off the Knights. And Boyning basically represents that depth up front. I mean, outside of her, it's basically just a rotation where people are going to be. She comes in every once in a while with a fresh lift. Got to think Hollerbach's role grows next season. But, of course, this season's not done, at least not for the Cougars. They're trying to extend as this one went into the net. 18-10 is going to be one of their bigger spreads 
Right. Certainly since the first. And what a run they've been on as of late. 18 serving 10. Knights set the middle. They'll get the point to break up the long run. It had been a 4-0 run for Centennial. It was something like a seven or eight one run. Dumped by the Cougars and Slarner. Puts her team back in front by nine. Rather by eight. I'll work on my math skills later. Jones on the serve. Rodriguez. And bumped over free by Mulvihill. Back set to the right side, down the line, Ashley Crown with the kill. Oh, that one got in. Or excuse me, just missed out of bounds, so with that it is an Irondale point. The attack error instead by the Cougars, and it's 19 to 12. Angelina Larson. J.C. Goligowski. Back set to the right side, the spike blocked back, played off the netting, and it falls to the floor on the night One, side. Two. That's a tough one to swallow if you're Irondale. Crawl, yeah, played so well, and, and again, they came and they got what no one thought they would in that third set. But at some point, the 22-win team, the number two seed, starts to catch up to you. And that point is now. Peterson from the outside. Pancake dig to keep it alive. We continue on. Clarner sets Peterson, and her power is pushed right back at her. The block rejects that attempt. 20 to 13. Irondale back within seven. Good lesson for young volleyball players out there. Always attempt the pancake block. I don't know that she actually got there, but it was close <laughs> enough and bounced up true enough where they kept it alive, and you play on. Don't just give it up. Peterson. Oh, I think oh, that, that could have out. been left alone. Instead, we play on, given to the front. Howie sets it up, this spike too strong, and the Cougars get the point in the end. 21-13. Ball set to the outside. Spike and kill for Irondale. Back within seven. Eliah Harris returns now for the Knights. Eliah will be serving. Check that. Aaron Cash will be serving. Off the serve by Tashney. Nice receive by Jones, and it's given over free by Sendel. Up to the front, Howie sets to the outside. McDonald digs, back set right side, nobody there. Beautiful play by Sendel. And that's been one of those openings that's been there for the Cougars when they've been able to take advantage and get those blockers moving side to side. And more importantly, get that back row moving on their heels to open up that spot. Back set right side, Sendel with the spike. Good play out of the back row, and then it's hit back to the Cougars end. McDonald pops it up for Jones, and Jones. Thought that was just gonna be a soft free ball, but she worked with it. This one out of the reach of the Cougars, 22-15. Yeah, I thought Jones had put that one down, a little spin, downward movement once it crossed the tape. No shock. Irondale continues to fight here. Down to the last. Narrow margin here, just like they had in the first two sets when we got to this point. Still battling. Off the serve by Turnowski. Rodriguez digs it out. Howie. Now this one sent too deep. 23-15, Cougars in front. Well, this could be their widest margin of victory in a set if they continue on. Two more and they win by double digits. McDonald on the serve, Rodriguez. And spiked over by Oliver. Set to the middle, spike and kill from the middle. 
It's Ashley Crowell. Crowell coming into the night, 226 kills, nearly, or over 200 fewer than Peterson. But on this night, Crowell has been as good as anyone on the court. This serve goes wide. 25-16, still set point, still match point. Cougars need one to win. Coming in to serve, Matty Herzog floats it over. Jones receives, Klarner for Peterson. Back row, kill, we're done. 25-16, the Cougars take it in four tonight, and they advance to the next round of the Section 4 3A tournament. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we wrap it up by chatting with a couple of the victors from the Cougars as Centennial picks up their 23rd win of the season. And you saw it all here on North Metro TV. Word. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Tilly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at seizetheawkward.org. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. North Metro TV News is your source for local stories. Highlighting the issues in your community, we bring you the news that's closer to home. Join us as we explore the stories all around us, every day at 2.30, 6.30, and 10.30. North Metro TV News is your source for local stories. Highlighting the issues in your community, we bring you the news that's closer to home. Join us as we explore the stories all around us, every day at 2.30, 6.30, and 10.30. Cougars win their first section match, 3-1 over the Irondale Knights. Let's check in with a couple of Cougars. Here's JW. Thanks, John. Obviously very strong, taking the first two sets. They take the third. What was it in the fourth that allowed you guys to focus back in and finish this one off in four like you did? I think we just really found, like, our trust in our teammates and found our energy versus the third set. We started super slow, and then we, like, got momentum towards the end. So we started really strong in the fourth set, which helped us a lot. 23 wins now for you guys. When you look at this team, what do you kind of see as, as your biggest positive and the thing that makes you guys so good going out there and getting those 23 wins this year? I think we've just all been playing together for so long that it's so natural for us because we've pretty much had the same amount of returners for like the last three years. So, Ashley, you were big in the middle on getting those kills, finishing things off. 
junior year, where do you kind of put your game as far as how comfortable you're feeling right now in the system and going out there and doing your job? Um, I'm feeling really comfortable. I have some great teammates and a great defense and setter that can get the ball up, and it just really puts it all together for us. Obviously, when you guys are running well, it's running through your setter right here. What has she meant to your guys' success this year, just being the captain of things out there on the floor in the action? She's meant a lot. She's a great leader, and she always hustles and is one of our hardest workers out on the court. All right, congrats on the win. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, John, back to you. Thank you very much, JW, and a big win for the Cougars. Their 13th consecutive match win tonight opens up their section playoff run, and we'll see who they get next, and we'll be there for that as well next week. The Knights finish their season 12 and 15. Thank you all for joining us this evening for our entire North Metro TV crew, including my broadcast partner, J.W. Gox. I'm John Haddon saying so long from Centennial, where the Cougars are victorious.